I've always been a fan of arcade style games as either time wasters or something to challenge myself with. Miss Pac-Man or Kung Fury the Game? Games with silly premises that are fun to watch and are fun to play. And games with awesome senses of humors. Those are just the icing on the cake. And today I found a game that combines all those aspects into a really good shoot 'em up platformer. Guns Gore Cannoli. A game where you play as an Italian mobster, going through a zombie filled city that drank just a little too much on St. Patrick's Day. In hindsight, I should have released this on the 18th of March, but you guys know me. Fat, lazy, and I spend more time with pizza than I do actual people. You think I'm joking, but the only real joke is... my life. Wow, that got sad. Actual subtle insecurity. It seems like it's always a good time to fucking hate yourself. Because relatable content. But anyways, Guns Gore Cannoli. The story centers on a mob enforcer named Vinny Cannoli, who was summoned by a mob boss to get a guy named Frankie in a town called Thugtown. That's the story. And then, zombie killing ensues. Doesn't take long for Vinny to find out that zombies have infested the city, but that isn't enough to deter him, and he begins his journey across Thugtown, leaving a trail of bodies in his wake. Story isn't anything too complex, and I will say the cutscenes, despite being well drawn, are kind of stiff since everyone is on the same field and standing on the same lane. It's a little jarring because everything's like really well drawn in a kind of unique art style that well captures the 1920s. But on the other hand, the story isn't what you play the game for. Now, the gameplay is a side-scrolling shooter with some basic platforming elements. Vinny can shoot a plethora of guns and kick zombies when they start mauling him. The guns all feel really good to use, and shooting zombies is fun. <laughs> the only gun I feel is underwhelming is the double-barrel shotgun, which, you know, being a double-barrel shotgun, it's got two bullets, and the range is pathetic. Besides the double barrel, no other gun makes you feel overpowered by the time you get it, and you always feel prepared for the hordes you have to face. And it might sound like this game doesn't have any major problems. Well, by the end of the first two levels, you essentially have seen every zombie that the game is going to throw at you. And the only new enemies are mobsters, the fucking military, and rats. After that, they reuse a lot of enemies for the final levels, which is pretty disappointing as the designs they used for the zombies were really interesting and humorous. I, I wanted to see what new zombies that they would introduce. And that is the game's strong point. The whole humor and how ridiculous everything is. We are a mobster, gunning down zombies and even the military. I'm gonna keep harping on that because you're shooting down the fucking military with, with a Tommy gun, what the hell? But as it goes on, the ridiculous kinda runs out and you're used to the weirdness. But, shooting zombies is still fun, and man, this game is hard. I mean, it's not hard like Battletoads or Ninja Gaiden, but it will still kick your ass at some points. Now, fortunately, in this game, there are no lives and there are no continues, which means you can die to your heart's content. My dream. And because I have no proper segue into this, I'm going to be discussing one of my main problems, the lack of a dodge roll in the game. All you have is a kick, which does the job, but you're not moving, only kicking some zombies away. While I was able to get through the game just fine, there were numerous times where I was attacked from both sides and I had to take damage so that I could manage the zombies. Fortunately, according to the website for the game, the sequel is going to include a dodge roll. So huzzah. But one problem I do have with this game that I could not get used to was the control scheme. Now, to shoot, you just pull on the R2 trigger. Just like every shooter made in the past 20 years. However, the reload button is mapped to R1, when it's usually mapped to the square button, and square and triangle are used for cycling through the weapons. Numerous times I found myself switching weapons when I wanted to reload. And personally, I find it weird how these buttons cycle through the weapons, go in the opposite direction that I think they should go. It's true, I did get used to the control scheme. It would have been nice if there was a way I could change the control settings and the options, which there isn't. And to go on a small tangent, this options menu is the most bare bones menu I've seen on a modern console game. This is stuff I would have seen on a freaking SNES game. I do wish the game would let you change the button layout for consoles, and I'm not sure if the PC does. 
Also, this game has multiplayer co-op where up to four players can go through the main campaign. Local only, though, so if you were planning to play with your online friends, I'm afraid you're out of luck. I was able to experience the multiplayer myself, and honestly, it was pretty damn fun, even though my buddy kept throwing all of his fucking grenades. And what's interesting is that the multiplayer is balanced, is that you're all focused on playing the game. Such as, when you die, you're unpunished for dying and you just respawn after pressing X. Though, if all of you die, it's game over and you gotta go to the last respawn point. Also, when you use ammo pickup, the ammo doesn't go to the player and it isn't divided up. For example, you pick up an ammo pack of like, five bullets. All the players get five bullets. That's honestly really cool. It strips a lot of the bullshit multiplayer games go through, so instead of having a competition between players, it's instead of just playing the game. <laughs> New Super Mario Brothers! <laughs> that wasn't a convincing cough. And to round this up, this game looks pretty good. The art style perfectly captures the atmosphere of the Roaring Twenties. All the zombies are drawn very humorously, but the highlight to the game is the backgrounds and the game's level design because it is incredibly drawn and very well detailed. Like, I found myself staring at the backgrounds because they were drawn just simply superbly. It was great. I wish more games would do backgrounds like that. And to top it all off, even when there were a dozen zombies on screen, the game didn't chug and the frame rate remained consistent the whole adventure. Apparently on the PC version this game can output at 1440p. Sweet Jesus. Which I know isn't saying much since 4K is on the horizon, but 1440p is a weird but cool resolution, you know? And how about the music? Once again, it captures the 20s wonderfully. The music goes from upbeat and jazzy to a Godfather influence piece to like a military influenced theme. I'm gonna be honest, the music didn't really stick in my head though. I thought it was sort of on the weak side since it was going more for an atmospheric feel rather than being catchy music. And also, to complain a little bit, I am surprised and somewhat annoyed that no one has ripped the game's soundtrack. I could not use the game's soundtrack, which means even though I'm saying the music sounds really freaking good, you can't hear it because none of you fuckboys on YouTube have ripped the game's soundtrack. But I do have a few things to say about the Xbox version, and a quick disclaimer, I don't have an Xbox, so I didn't experience it firsthand, but a friend of mine said that the game crashes around level 5 and does it consistently. This apparently has happened to other Xbox players as my friend found out. I had no issues with the PS4 version, so, so this is a weird issue that you think would have been patched out. But I still recommend this game as a great single player experience, and you should definitely pick this up if it's ever on sale. But if you're only interested in the multiplayer, I would only recommend this for Wii U and PS4 owners. As I know, most PC gamers aren't interested in games being local only. You get a PC, you're doing the online portion. And of course, I wouldn't recommend it for Xbox because, well, it doesn't work. And the sequel is in development, slated for release this year, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna come out sometime next year. Who knows? It supposedly takes place during World War II, and you know that your boy Sombrero is gonna be taking a look at that when it comes out. Hopefully it comes out for all platforms, you know, Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and the PC. And, supposedly, multiplayer online is going to be added, so this sounds like it will be the perfect sequel to Guns for Cannoli. So, that'll be something to look at when it comes out. But I wonder, what's the next game we're going to be looking at? It's been a very long time, but I think we're going to be going back to the world of Shovel Knight. See you all then. Wow, that got sad.